Ayan, magandang araw sa ating class. Uh, welcome sa ating uh, Queer Cinema class, Exploring Philippine Gender and Sexual Diversities in Film. So we've tackled uh, numerous films already dito sa ating mismong class. Pero today, uh, we'll have an example pagdating sa Philippine Queer Cinema under martial law. Of course, we know na dito sa class na ito, uh, what we aim to discuss always and to have a conversation is to also look at Um, hindi lang yung current trends pagdating sa queer cinema but also historical no sa past din kung paano din umiral yung mga ganitong pelikula doon sa mga unang panahon kung saan nagkaroon tayo ng ganitong mga examples. So pagdating dito sa ating uh, current uh, lesson pagdating sa queer Philippine uh, cinema under martial law no uh, tingnan natin kung paano yung diverse representations ng LGBTQ at the time hindi pa naman siya LGBTQ no mga bakla, mga tomboy, mostly mga sword, no mga totibo or t-bird kung paano nagkaroon ng diverse representations yung community nung 1970s to 1980s because uh, you'd know ay din sa history no na yung karamihan sa mga images and representation really reached the point of a certain peak nung panoon ng 70s and 80s. Pero hindi lang siya pagdating doon sa uh, in a vacuum or zeroed in pagdating sa LGBTQ identities. Pero they intersect with social political conditions of the time. Some also controversial under Marcos's film censorship policies and all other oppressive uh, means kung paano din napatahimik o sinusubukang patahimikin ang maraming film artists nung panahon na yan. No? So today, uh, what we're gonna discuss is Manila by Night, a queer film classic. So let's look at uh, kung, ano, kung paano yung pelikulang ito ay maaaring matawag na queer film at kung bakit din relevant yung pelikula na ito sa usapin ng queer cinema sa Pilipinas and siguro masasabi ko din sa world. <laughs> Pero at the same time ay uh, kung bakit din um, its form, its content, and its context, how it um, existed noong 1980, kung kailan siya pinalabas and uh, its impact in the industry, really um, gave way for uh, a certain representation of queer people intersecting with various narratives and also experiences ng mga Pilipino noong panahon na yon. So let's look at Manila by Night as a focus for today's lesson. So uh, I gave you this assignment na pwede niyong panoorin no? and I got some insights then. Well, namely, these are from Letterboxd. <laughs> Pero for the sake of demonstration, um, this is uh, the classes or uh, the spectators, kung ano din yung naging insights na sa Manila by Night. So it ranges from different aspects. Um, sinabi na Bernal managed to capture the temptations, immoralities, filthiness, and difficulties of nighttime Manila during the Marcos era. Something about the dialogue. will now reply, I love you also to every I love you I receive. Uh, calling back doon sa ano, no? or throwing back doon sa scene ni William Martinez having sex with Gina Alahar sa pelikula. And then, somehow about appearances, ang ganda-ganda ni Sherry Hill, pero ang Reyna ay si Monay Sharon spitting facts for 2 hours and 14 minutes. Bratatat. And yun nga lang, meron ding mga negative impressions, has the look, or siguro mixed impressions, has the look and feel of a glorified soap opera. And uh, yung restoration, <laughs> Something about ano din no, sapphic love uh, scenes dito. Uh, yung isang classmate natin gustong mapanood yung restoration para makita yung butch lesbian Sherry Hill tenderly touching and making love to Rio Luxine. And uh, may nagsabi din that it remains uh, to be as provocative as it was in. It was uh, released which led to some censorship issues. Brave performances and that ending still gets me. Ayan. So sige. A short background on Manila by Night, you can see here the trailer from the Regal Platinum series. Siyempre, released na yan right after. So, uh, yung Manila by Night, of course, yung sabi sa synopsis from IMDB and Letterboxd, sabi niya, it's all about the hidden nightlife of ordinary people living in Manila uh, and veils. Lovers and families' conflicts are radically pitted against each other as they live in the night streets rampant with drugs and prostitution. So you'd recognize, kahit dun sa synopsis, this film is all about sex workers. About, well, at the time as prostitute pa yung ginagamit. Pero people who have transactions with different people, actually yun din yung mapapansin mo doon sa thematic niya. No? It's all about also transactions and nasaan ba talaga ang love. No? <laughs> and then it's a film, of course, directed by Ishmael Bernal under Regal films written by wala siyang writer pero it, interestingly it, it, interestingly wala din siyang naging script no na talagang fully formed and realized na script pero 
it had script consultants as you would see doon as, as I think nakita nyo doon sa credits na sa umpisa pa lang uh, Ricky Lee, Jorge Arago, Toto Belano, Jose Carion, George Season and Peke Galiaga ay ilan doon sa mga nagsulat so uh, according kay Ricky Lee doon sa documentary na Ishma isa-isa niyang kinausap itong writers na to and depending doon sa Uh, kung anong kailangan doon sa eksena, no? yun yung sinusupply nilang dialogue. And true to its inspiration, which is Nashville by Robert Altman, I think you can, you should also watch that. It's also a classic in narrative filmmaking. Pero with the multi-character structure, no? and also doon sa, ano din yan, doon sa naging direction ni Bernal, na nag-provide siya ng space for um, improvisations and letting the actors also work out ano yung agenda ng eksena. No? So, with that in mind, kung ano yung thematic and also the way it was done, no? may kita nyo na talagang interesting din siya in this realm. I mean, in this, um the topic of queer cinema and at the same time, cinema of, of the time. no um, Dati kasi, as Joel David would mention, sikat yung multi-character films pero not in this way na intertwine but also showing different social realities. no I would say this is a social realist film whose aesthetic aesthetics, no aesthetic qualities do not actually mirror much of what is happening noong panahon na yon. Kasi mas documentary filmmaking yung isang naging approach. Uh, minsan mas static yung paglalagay uh, niya ng mga eksena. And uh, may tendency minsan as would um, some critics would say, even at the time and into the present, na medyo episodic, no? looking at this scene, this narrative, and then another one. no. Pero it's the agenda, I would believe, pagdating doon sa storytelling, that it would tell the stories of different people, intertwined, but also experiences that would um, challenge no? a certain propaganda of then-governor Imelda Marcos, which is the true good and the beautiful, the beautification of Manila, no? yung nasabi din ni Bonifacio Ilagan doon sa Ishma documentary na tinatakpan yung shanties no or yung mga slum areas yung mga squatter tinatakpan para kapag may dumating na mga ano no kunyari Manila Film Festival visitors or mga tourists from other countries they wouldn't see that Manila is rampant with poverty corruption and you know different uh contradictions and issues no so uh this one is very controversial because of how Imelda Marcos tried to censor it no there was a time it should have should have gone to the 1981 um Berlin Film Festival pero pinaharang siya ni Imelda Marcos even um censoring much of the contents uh forcing uh, Regal to film an alternative ending that shows each character ano man yung kanilang naging background reaching some sort of um resolution or uh, finale. No, inisa-isa naka-narrate pa yun no, kung napanood niyo yung nasa YouTube, yung City After Dark. And saying that, no, even the title was changed. Na ginawa siyang City After Dark because um, then-Governor Imelda doesn't want to associate Manila with such uh, grimy or uh, controversial subject matter. So, uh, isa siya dun sa mga naging biktima ng paggutay-gutay, no? Uh, we must remember na under martial law pa rin ito. It's 1980. Na-lift lang si martial law ng 1981. And the rest of the years of the waning Marcos period ng 80s is also um a battle between ano, no, oppressive uh, government policies and at the same time uh, the the masses fighting back. no. And I would say Manila by Night is also one of the cultural artifacts that really um, gave way para i-challenge din yung not just the ano no na the government at the time but also filmmaking and um pagpapakita pagpapatampok ng queer narratives in a multi-character arc no so magandang mabasa and i believe na isama natin to sa reading list no yung Manila by Night ni Joel David although very limited lang yung copies nito no pero um this is one of a few books that really centered on Manila by Night the movie no may certain segment siya doon sa Uh, Pro-Bernal Anti-Bio na libro ng Everything's Fine in ABS-CBN uh, tungkol sa buhay ni Ishmael Bernal. So with this one, um, nais nating uh, ipatampok, no? na, nabanggit din ni Joel David, na the queer characters are particularly interesting as they stand out as the moral centers in engaging city life and love respectively. You should see kung paano nag-usap yung dalawang queer characters, namely of course Manay, Sharon, and then Kano, 
played by Bernardo Bernardo and uh, Sherry Hill respectively. So, uh, doon sa eksena mismo, yung uh, all red, silang dalawa, talking about love, diba? can even study it semiotically. What does it mean? Uh, how do these people survive? And then, uh, ano yung outlook nila sa pagmamahal? Because yung mismong mga outlook na yon updates kung paano sila nag-navigate within the story of the film. no? And uh, doon sa review ni Joel uh, Masangkay Diaz ng libro na ito, sinabi niya na, Manila's queerness emerges not only in its identifiably queer characters, but also look at the treatment of gender and sexuality as multifarious and porous. No, especially hindi ko din na mention the character of Pebrero, no, played by Orestes Ojeda, who is also ah uh, nilang siya philandering pero yung pag-ibig niya yung kanyang pagmamahal is open to levels of pansexuality. No, and at the same time you can look at kung paano din nagnavigate ng sex workers sa kanilang buhay within Manila, kung paano din yung former sex sex workers suddenly become you know rich middle class uh, mothers like in the character of ano of uh sino ito si Charito Solis look at the characters of Alma Moreno and Rio Luxin the loves of William even William Martinez no the younger uh, let's say maaari you know may pansexual tendencies no And the film highlights this queerness through its innovative style and multi-character format. Even the aesthetics challenging uh, what was on vogue at the time, no? hindi siya ganun ka-technically polished, pero its utilization of available tools to tell the multi-character story is also somewhat something that we can look at when it comes to queer filmmaking. No? Because of that kind of aesthetic as well, uh, nabigyan ng importance yung every narrative that is being shown, including the ones that are most powerful, I believe, no, yung queer character narratives. No? So it also challenges the form of Western cinema, especially at the time, dahil nga yung technical polish and all that. No? And to hammer home the point, no, uh, what Bernal and eventually, well, Bernardo Bernardo said doon sa documentary ni Nasarid Sarinarena, which is it's not, no? and I think this was also echoed by uh, Ricky Lee, in some of uh, conversations with regards to Manila by Night, na ang goal ni Bernal is to feature the conscience of Manila, of the city, as bakla. No? And with that, uh, what are we talking about? Uh, ibig sabihin, yung mismo outlook ng pelikula is coming from a queer perspective. Let's say from a bakla perspective. From Bernal mismo. I mean, let's not forget that Ishmael Bernal is also a queer filmmaker. No? Very vocal siya tungkol sa kanyang pagkabading. Uh, ang kanyang mga pelikula ay nagpe-feature ng LGBTQ roles. No? If you look at, bo- you, should, you should really watch Broken Marriage, no? Salawahan. Uh, the different films also feature prominent LGBTQ characters. Also, providing not stereotypes. No? Yun yung kagandahan din dito because um, what Manila by Night is really... Um, Breaking also, pagdating sa ganitong usapin, yung talagang sinachallenge niya is the stereotypes na nag-exist for a both, uh, sabihin man natin na assigned male or assigned female at birth ng mga queer individuals or characters. And um, at the same time, it was mentioned in David's book na uh, the queerness in Manila by night resides much in its politiz- politicization of so-called perverse sexualities as it does in its reconfiguration of film form. So, Uh, na may mention ni na Joel David even Ronald Reitan the importance of uh, the both the form and the content in being queer no at least at in those period in that period kung paano din siya maaring magawa no doon sa current landscape ng pelikula and going beyond Manila by Night you can read different texts by uh, Ishmael Bernal no take for instance yung ginawa niyang essay on how uh, martial law will ruin your sex life no, no 1970 before martial law and also yung kanyang uh, libro ngayon from everything's fine sa makati uh, meron siyang sinulat about bomba so reading that text and then watching manila by night and the different um, approaches of bernal in challenging the film form gives us an idea kung paano din niya kinequeer kung paano niya chine-challenge and um breaking the mold of uh, ano man yung naiset na standards ng panahon na yon to insert you know the the rainbow <laughs> narratives of course hindi pa ganun ka prominent yung rainbow at the time no the the lgbtq movement would start in the 90s pero that's what's important here na even before the movement took place even before the public discourse began bernal was already talking about it was already putting it in his films no 
And then, uh, well, ang challenge din naman dun sa isang impression ni David from Ronald Baitan is to grounding on the sexual identities in the country and on the specificity of their transgressive queer performances. This is a challenge that has been um, siguro being posed on queer scholars even up to the present. No? Kasi most of the, the discourse also um, is centered on kung paano nakikita ng West ang queerness. Pero what does the Filipino outlook on queerness look like? No? But I would say, and I would argue, that Manila, Manila by Night um, provides that sort of outlook. No, even up to the present time. And why it still matters is because, as I've mentioned, it features underrepresented sectors in his films way before the conversation. And then, even if we're talking about intersectionality since the 90s up to the present, I would say this film is already tackling the intersectionalities of class, gender, sexuality, disability, etc. shown to be inherent in Bernal's multi-character narrative. So, the form itself is important because it gives way to this sort of agenda, this sort of um way of tackling these issues through multi-character narratives, through mismong form. No? Na masabi naman natin hindi aesthetic, no? somehow may nagsasabi din, like for example, um there was also Patrick Campos who wrote as Manila by Night as Third Space, na sinabi niya, this is also an example of third cinema, no? kung paano yung revolutionary aesthetics can also be used. And in this way, I would argue was used effectively in a mainstream commercial film no i mean think about that diba i mean i think about doing that in abscbn <laughs> it's possible no pero it has already been possible through bernal in 1980 no so now the parcos's government's censorship only proved its transgressive perspective the film's transgressive perspective the challenges the true good and beautiful propaganda of the conjugal dictatorship no so head on um, even with the title Manila by Night or even City After Dark, you know, what really happens in the underbelly of this city that is being posed as something true, good, and beautiful? You, know, you can even argue it up to the present. Ano ba yung hindi pinapansin? Ano yung shun away? You know? Even in the 2000s, in the 2010s, 2020s, look at Manila. You know, kung paano din siya nag operate ngayon. In, look, look at the government, what it does to the whole country. You know? So it's sort of like a microcosm in some way. You know? A city as an, a reflection of an entire country. That would, again, ay siguro kaya din naging national artist itong ating Ishmael Bernal. You know? Pero kasi pinakita din siya with Himala. Eventually, pinakita din siya with Hinugot sa Langit. You know? And those trio of films and as for sure the other films would also suffice to say that uh it's a microcosm of different cultural and social aspects of the philippines but manila by night i would say also has a queer cinema legacy look at the queer cinema that came after for example yung first picture dyan si back midnight dancers no kung paano din na incorporate ni kili yung politics ng manila by night and looking at sex workers in the 90s look at the rise of indie cinema no 2000 uh, mid 2000s no with pagdadalaga ni Maximo Oliveros, with Kanakan Balintagos, tackling homosexuality and being queer without just focusing on, you know, queerness itself, but also looking at the different um aspects na kung saan pwede mag-operate yung queerness. It's a Manila by Night legacy, no? I would say. And then the multi-character films, let's say One Night Only, na may queer narratives, but, you know, played, again, minsan meron ding tendency for stereotyping. Pero the multi-character films already also existed nung panahon na ito, not just One Night Only, but also look at Jologs, no? Biyahing Lupa ni Armando Binglao, no? And then contemporary films, of course. Um, June Lana is a very um, prominent, I would say, uh, successor to Ishmael Bernal and how Bernal made films and uh, the filmmaking of Ishmael Bernal by focusing on queer narratives and also locating it uh, within a bigger picture of the Philippine re social realities. And then uh, even if hindi, uh, ano, ano, hindi uh, prominently queer na film, like say Third World Romance, we're in you locate the intersectionalities also of gender and class and featuring a family, an affirming family of LGBTQ individuals kung saan nagmula si Carlo Aquino no, dun sa pelikulang iyon. So those are just some examples. I believe there are more. no. Pero eventually, what Manila by Night no, is really, well, I would say relevant in <laughs> is because uh, it's a retrospective look at the past and how queerness was viewed in those periods. Pero pwede rin siyang guide for future scholars as we noticed doon sa queer cinema legacy. No? 
um for not just for scholars but filmmakers and activists no many activists still look at uh, Manila by Night as something of a milestone film to so to show social realities no within the mainstream cinema no and uh the fact that uh, it continues to locate queer narratives as valid as ordinary narratives is something that we fight for today no to make it na parang it's we're just as ordinary as the everyday person no nagkataon lang na iba yung so GSC natin iba tayo eh, from the LGBTQ community no and within the context and aesthetics the challenge oppressive systems so the the question now is how would we follow through with manila by night no so we can discuss this in the after this uh, presentation no pero at the same time following through uh, dun sa iba 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 pang films that we can tackle we can look at those aspects no how did um how do these queer films challenge the gender binaries and the oppressive systems with intersectional uh, intersectional politics no through the aspects of filmmaking not just with the content and representation you know that inherent in that content but also with the form the aesthetics and also within certain contexts kung nasaan tayo. So, that's Manila by Night, a queer film classic. I hope uh, marami tayong napulot dito sa ating discussion. And we're still gonna discuss this, no, I believe, in the future because, you know, it's not it's not really my favorite of Bernal. Pero, it's as powerful, no? It's, it's very powerful. It's a very powerful film that needs to be discussed, I mean, like, every day or every year or every time we're talking about queer cinema. So that's it. Thank you so much for listening. Maybe we can now proceed to the discussion.